Oh dear. Oh dear. So they managed to get... Oh, that's insane. As if they managed to get that. I think we lose the game because of the Colony Garden. Did they hold that in their hand the whole time, I wonder? Um, They've got one card left. And they lose the game. GG's. Yeah, that was a... That was a weird game. What power would hell have if those here imprisoned were not able to dream of heaven? Today's video is inspired by Neil Gaiman's Sandman, which has just come out on Netflix. Um, just to clarify, I'm not sponsored by them at all, although I would definitely want to if they came to me for this. But um, I've basically fallen in love with the show. I haven't finished it quite yet. I've got two episodes to go, but my God, it's so engrossing. And I just love the way it's filmed and it's just different and amazing. And I never read the comics or the graphic novels, but they um, are something definitely on my radar now. And I would definitely want to read through as many as I can. But I thought, why don't I make a deck that's inspired by the character and maybe some of the stories if possible. And then I was thinking... Um, theory crafting about how I'd make the deck and I came on to the idea of dreams obviously because the show and the books follows dream who's the lord of dreams and who better to represent him than Ashiok dream render uh, he is a mill specialist he'll put cards into your opponent's graveyard and then they'll exile their graveyard so it's really powerful control finisher it's quite strange in this deck because it's not really the main the main show He's definitely a side, side show event because you're probably going to get him killed a lot. But that's fine. He keeps coming back ever onward, ever striving to prolong the dream realm. A lot of the cards in the deck refer to dreams or nightmares. There's actually quite a lot of nightmares or spectres in the deck like Thief of Sanity. You've even got a few mutate cards with a chittering harvester, cavern whisperer. You've got some more Ashioks in here, and Ashok also makes nightmares. So there's a lot of flavour seeping within. Cards that refer to dreams are cards like Drawn from Dreams, uh, Dream Fracture, which is really cool, Dream Strix, Hunted Nightmares, Dream Devourers. Um, yeah, there's lots of little cool little things related to dreams, and I thought it'd just be a bit of a homage to my newfound love for this fantastic show. It's um, it's just such a great show. I would really recommend it on Netflix. There's only eight episodes. They're about 45 minutes long each. But it's just so well constructed. It's filmed in this very ethereal way where everything looks dreamlike. And obviously that's the intent, the effort they've put in to put into the period pieces that you see. Because it time hops a bit. The characters you see, the quotes, they're just so dramatic. Um, everything's written very poetically as well. Neil Gaiman obviously is a master of English and he's crafted the show and the books in a way that is just incredible and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do and I've uh, talked to a few people who said they didn't really get into it that much but I recommend you stay with it and see how far you can get I'm almost finished now and I'm kind of sad um, I'm hoping there'll be another season but in the meanwhile I'll probably get the books so I hope you like this flavor themed deck based on the Sandman himself the Lord of Dreams and join me on this adventure to see how well we can do with this control based deck the deck list will be in the description below and if you appreciate what i do with these theme decks i'm probably the only guy on youtube right now who does historic th brawl themed decks like th like this i don't see anyone else making decks like this and i hope that makes me unique so if you think that's true why not drop me a like and a sub to see more videos like this and of course you can always donate to my channel to support me and make me feel loved so let's get into the games We go first against Ral Storm Conduit. Now they're probably going to be some comboiness. There's probably going to be some combo in this in the deck because they want to double their spells. Normally in this kind of deck, they want to double extra turn spells. So let's see if we can get rid of something used for her. Okay, so there's an abrade and an extra turn spell that they're probably going to want to copy. Um, blimey. I think we get rid of the Epiphany. It's just way too good. If they, especially if they copy that, we're in absolute. We're in a lot of trouble. Um, so they could have Braid in our next turn. But they're going to have to pick between 
a braid or foretelling the beholder multiverse let's see what they value mostly next turn if they don't use kill the ornithopter we can bring it um, the duress back which is something I really want to do so this is awesome each player mills four then I return two cards to my hand wow that's a lot of great cards counter spell and duress is awesome so Ashok is going to be really useful here to exile all this crap in their graveyard because it's going to potentially come back and bite us in the ass. Dual Custom Mage can copy any instant or sorcery spell including ours. So I can see what they drew there because they see we have counter spells so we probably would have countered that if they did that in our turn. Lightning Bolt? Did they miss a land drop then? Looks like they may have. So we're now missing the double blue, which is kind of annoying. Let's see what we can kill here. We'll get rid of... Hmm, the flashback will be annoying, but if we get rid of that, then we can also mill it from the graveyard. So I think this is actually going to be pretty useful here. And Ashok is really good against enemy control decks, because dedicated control decks like this tend to struggle once you get rid of their graveyard, especially if they've got stuff like Mizzix's Mastery. You can absolutely screw someone over. I'm hoping they go for the Storm Kiln. Okay, they go for Ral. Now, their Scrying is useless because we are just going to mill four. So if they keep it on top, they have made a mistake. Unless it's a land they deliberately put on top. Okay, well, let's just see what they put on top then. So it wasn't a land, so, which makes me wonder why did they... I guess they didn't mind losing that, did they? That's the whole point. Let's go for the Dreamtail Hedron. It's four toughness. It's going to be useful because the Abrade only does three. Although they could combine that with the Spike Guild Hazard to deal four. However, they will be sacrificing a land to do that because that's a dual face land. <clears throat> Although saying that, they're going to copy a spell. So the Abrade, I guess, does six damage here. But I mean, if that's what they're spending the whole turn doing, then I guess I'm You're fine with not that. enough. So they do get to ping Ashok right. though, so that is that is sad because that's two activations we now can't do. It's a real shame about not having the blue. Oh, okay, and then they just finish it off with the land, but I guess it means they don't get that land. My victory was but a dream. So we're gonna need something better than this. So we've got the spell pierce, which may help, but Nightmare. we'll see. The they don't know about the spell pits yet. Jinga Tactics from the Graveyard. We're definitely facing a tier 1 deck here. Um, which is kind of crazy because we're definitely not a tier 1 deck. We're we're a decent power level, probably about 6 to 7. But this guy's deck is definitely higher. Solve the equation. I think I want to spell pits one of these. I don't really want them getting two tutors to hand. You must. Yeah, the fact that they can just get double spells twice in a row is pretty absurd. Although, saying that, Ashok does actually stops them tutoring. So, if I'd actually read my own card, uh, that would have probably been a bit better. But, <laughs> oh well. Oh, we get our own tutor. So, we can do that. I mean, we can't cast a counter spell. So, we might as well keep the power word kill up. Go for the tutor. What's the best thing you can go for here? Maybe we go for another Ashiok. Let's keep the flavour strong. And then we mill them again. Who knows, maybe this mill will come in useful. Multiple Ashiok certainly is. And if we keep ticking up with this one, they're going to keep need... They'll, sorry, they'll need more removal spells over time. So I wonder if they're more like a tap-out blue-red deck. Can't see many counter spells. Search for Scanter. So Ashok pretty much nullifies that, which is pretty awesome. The dual caster mage only works on spells though, so... Yeah, let's go for Ashiok. Fingers crossed they don't have a counter spell. Sweet. So then, if we go up, let's make it harder for the opponent to take care of because remember if, if this Ashok gets the ultimate we can cast three spells from exile which is pretty insane. The search for a scanter will likely never flip as long as we have a scanter out. 
I wouldn't have minded if they just played the double vision as well. I think we would that would have been fine. Scrying one each time again. Not too bothered about that. We can sort that out with our shock. Which makes me think maybe I should have gone for this. Oof, Narset. Narset is my powerful. Is by my peers. But we can still draw a card in their turn with Lockthwain anyway, so as if they missed. They missed with a Dantic. That's crazy. That is crazy. Okay, let's swing it. The mm, see, this is pretty big now, isn't it? So actually, I'm going to swing it, Narset. Exile more of their stuff. So now I don't really know what to do. Do I just? I think I'm going to bounce the Rao to their hand because them getting multiple instances of copying is pretty ridiculous, to be honest. And somehow we are like keeping them in check. Doom Whisper resolving is huge. Let's exile the graveyard again. We do lose the Ashok, but man, this feels really powerful. Probably one of the strongest mill commanders. And yeah, I'm happy to pass. We've got the Lock Thwain up, so we can draw a card in their turn, which is probably pretty useful. We can even use the Doom Whisperer to surveil. A little bit. Oh, that feels good because I know how powerful Rail Deck is. It's basically extra turns, copy extra turns. So that felt fantastic. Well done, Dream. You did it. Opponent goes first with Imara Soul of the Cord, which is going to be a Selesnya deck looking to go wide and potentially use tap mechanics like vehicle crewing to enable her ability to go off. Uh, if there's any abilities with Convoke which lets you tap creatures to do stuff, we might be seeing some of those as well. There's a few of those from Ravnica. She's a pretty powerful card, although they did not get her out on turn 2, which buys us a lot of time there. Interesting our Dread Presence once swamps when he's out, but it doesn't cost that many to actually get out. They missed another land drop. So, yeah, this is a good time for Ashiok, I think. I felt like that was going to be a mana time there. Whenever a creature, so we can target them unhindered by the Shaper's uh, Sanctuary. Veil of Summer. Now that's a very early use of Veil of Summer. We've got Duress. So yeah, let's go for the Elspeth's Nightmare here. They are going to draw a card, but this triggers before the second ability so we're going to get to see the card in the hand later we get duress as well so we can look in the hand now too flip an egg that's a lot of stuff um let's get rid of the oh my goodness there's so many things i think history that gives them two two twos which is kind of annoying if they want to waste the whole turn for fateful absence that's fine with me you. If that means that our Dread Present survives, yeah, cool. So two lands apparently isn't enough, even with the Shaper Sanctuary. Let's move on. It's been a while, but we're going to face a Winota, Joiner of Forces, and she's been nerfed somewhat. So let's we'll quickly read the nerf. I'm going to mull this. We want more lands. Okay, we've got more lands. That's fine. Whenever one or more non-human creatures attack, look at the top six, you may put a human creature card from among them. So it used to be for each one, but now it's one or more. So I think it's been nerfed to hell and back. So I feel like this is a pretty decent nerf. Unlike some of the nerfs that just came out recently, where they tried to nerf Cabaretti Rebels by making it cost red, red, green, or green, green, red, rather than the generic red, green, which I don't think <laughs> is enough, honestly. So I um, don't know what to do. Maybe give a Dream Devourer, Feed the Swarm. I just want to kill this, I think. It's just irritating. I don't like I don't like them doubling the creatures they have. Yeah, attacks create a 1-1. One, one. Pretty annoying. Now the next attack, it, okay, not a fly. That's exactly what I wanted. So we can go for the Graveyard Trespasser. 
Flippin' heck. So many creatures already. Trespasser comes out. It's a decent blocker. We could just straight up lose to the aggro here. I mean, despite the fact that they nerfed this, still getting one free creature is kind of crazy. Did they miss a land drop, I wonder? If they did, it would be very helpful for us to gain a bit of leverage because they went first. They can't really get through that well. And then we can just kill this by discarding a card and a kill spell. Um... Elite Spellbinder. That probably gets the Nightmare Shepherd, sadly. Which would have been our second blocker. <laughs> That's a pretty good card for them as well. It's a attacker, which means it can go over the top really easily. Um, yeah. Foul, Foul Watch is a bit of a number in the deck because it cares about cards in... Actually, no, it's fine. It cares about cards in my graveyard. Yeah, I thought I said opponents. That's fine. Surveilling one is okay. On a 1-2 body. In the old days this would have been 4 mana. 4 mana 1-2. Stormcrow. So. What did they actually. Okay they chose the Dream Devourer. Spell Pierce. Uh, now. A bit confused here. Why they went for the Dream Devourer. That, that has confused me somewhat. Is there a reason for this? Okay. So now they attack with all. And we have two good blocks. Let's see if they get anything powerful. Double strike would be bad. Banalish Marshall. And that's got indestructible. Okay. <laughs> we can tank a few hits. So down to 14. Blimey. So, yeah, this Banalish Marshal is actually pretty annoying, not going to lie. Let's go for the Foul Watcher. I guess we can start blocking and trading. Midnight Clock. Let's see if they care about the Dream Render. What is the actual wording here? Of the passive. Spells and abilities you can, can't cause a control to search the library. They're not actually searching despite it, the fact it does feel like searching but they're not all creatures have double strike <coughs> pardon me of course they got that double strike one didn't they <sighs> yeah i think yeah we just died from this so it turns out winota wasn't actually stopped that much was it yeah we just died from the <laughs> we died from the excess double strike okay cool so wizards come on work nerf winota a bit more No, no audio, so I'll just have to uh, put my own sound effects next time. Alright, let's see how the next game goes. Right, Penny goes first with Iluna, Apex of Wishes. This is most probably the combo build, where they play a series of non-creature creatures via instants or sorceries. And then they will mutate onto it, get into Omniscience, which is the only permanent, and then they are good from there. So we could duress turn one, but I think I'd rather get the blue source out so we can start thinking about that later on. Into the north. So not much we can really do about ramp now. Bond of Insight might prove to be useful here, only because it might mill their omniscience. So let's see if we can duress something. Well, Command gives them squirrels, so we're getting rid of that. So we're basically, by doing that, it means they can't win by turn 5 now. So, it doesn't look like it, but we literally just gave ourselves a hell of a... more of a chance there. Um, I guess we can make them use the Molten Impact here. Because it does 4 damage, but... I am your if we get it out of the way early, we might be able to protect... This. Some of our other creatures or planeswalkers that we get. If excess damage is dealt this way, when you cast your next instant sorcery, multi impact deals damage equal to that excess to the next one. Wow, okay, so it's like a domino My effect. Okay, so that's dream. fine. Okay, let's see 
if we can mill an omniscience. If we do, they're going to be in trouble. Oof, we milled some great cards. So we just get duress back, but that's important. Although saying that, they will be drawing seven here. Oh no, they... Oh dear. Oh dear, so they managed to get... Oh, that's insane. As if they managed to get that. I think we lose the game because of the Colony Garden. Did they hold that in their hand the whole time, I wonder? Um, they've got one card left. And they lose the game. GG's. Yeah, that was a... That was a weird game. Opponent goes first with Kyodai. Let's see if we're dealing with shrines. I reckon... High chance it's a shrine build. Um, if we keep our island for the spell pierce, then we should see pretty soon what we're dealing with. Double blue. Oh, is it a spicy build? Could be. Let's go for the search here. The benefit of having a shock is it's very cheap, so you can cast them quite a few times before the opponent starts reading. Uh, land on top is is okay. It's just not very exciting, is it? Uh, I think this is a good opportunity for the Cold Steel Heart. Let's set that to blue. And then the opponent might be lulled into a false sense of security here. Because Spell Pierce got counters and non-creature spells. They pick two. Lolth. Well, all I can say is that was very lucky. Because Lolth would have been pretty tricky to deal with. And land again. Let's get rid of that. So now we have five mana. We can do all sorts of groovy stuff. I think it's safer to duress first. Just... Just a bit of patience to see what we're working against here. Holy crap. Uh, I th yeah, it's, so it's a Planeswalker build. Oh, okay, so it's like a Super Friends kind of thing. So if we go for the creature, this can threaten the Planeswalker. So yeah, this is, this is more effective. We could have gone for Ashok, but it doesn't really serve us a later purpose. So that's an example of really thinking ahead of which permanent. So yeah, they've gone for the dragon. So we're going to kick them in the nuts here. And you'll see why in a moment, unless they can counter it. So with this Ashok, if you return a token to their hand, they then lose a real card in their hand as well. So that just did double duty essentially. And now because we played the creature out previously, which is just a 3-3 pretty much. We get to take care of the Sarkhan with ease. So, sequencing there was really important. If we play the Ashiok first, we wouldn't have been able to kill the Sarkhan. Ashiok making blocker. So, Dream Eater. We don't have the mana for this. So, I guess we have to create plus one there. We could just straight up contempt the Ashiok, which is something... Yeah, let's just get rid of it. And then the following turn, we could even use the Dream Eater to balance the token, unless something else horrible happens. But we've got ourselves in a really good position. So they're a Super Friends build. And we take them down, yeah. That was pretty lucky, really. Super Friends is notoriously hard. That Duress was clutch as well. Yeah, definitely saved us there. Don't forget to check out more of my videos. And also my Kofi donations page. You can donate as little or as much as you want.